Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Welcome to the brewery. Today, I'm going to be working on these goddamn lids from the conical fermenters that we purchased from um, Liverpool. I believe it was at the time the outgoing Mad Hatter Brewery and uh, the conicals ended up in the hands of somebody else they were from the Mad Hatter I believe and uh, well now they're in my hands and due to the way that these particular fermenters are designed the tops of the fermenters are just the edges of the steel sheet so you've got two millimeter or thereabouts lip and that meets this lid which is it's flat steel with the band welded on all the way around it now because of that there are minor imperfections in terms of uh, bumps and divots all the way around due to warping from welding the stainless steel now you can't they're not totally obvious to the naked eye but they are there so when we're cleaning inside the tanks, this lid being the other way around of course any cleaning products or water or whatever coming out of the spray ball which is centrally mounted hits the side and it can get around that two millimeter edge lip and then drip down the outside of the tanks which when we're using caustic is not an ideal situation so to try and combat that I've put this neoprene um, double-sided kind of tape for want of a better word on there and it's worked to a certain extent this one's almost fine apart from a patch that's come off there um, some of the others weren't deep enough so I had to put two layers on and what seems to have happened is moisture ingress of some type and the layers have blown apart so it's kind of back to the drawing board with this project now it's very tricky without climbing inside the tanks to get a real indication of where exactly the internal um, tank lip comes to but thanks to the fact that this has been on a tank for I don't know almost a year then we can indeed, if we look carefully, whether this is going to show up or not, it might do there, we can see the impression of the tank lip and it's not very far in at all. So this, what would you say, 30 millimeter or thereabouts neoprene is probably overkill for where we need it. So I think if we just get a 20 mil bead of sealant around the edge that should be sufficient to prevent any further um, leaks and doing it this way we can kind of make our own gasket out of one of my favorite um, silicons. Now let me see if I've got a tube hanging about here we go so there are two options open to us which work really quite well so this is my second go-to this is Pura Flex. it's a high mod polyurethane sealant and adhesive and this one for me had quite a high uh, melting point I believe well surface temps minus 40 to plus 80 this one however is my preferred brand plumber's gold you can get it in a variation of colors and I'm just looking for uh, working temps on here but I have this in the kettle just as a sealant along the top it doesn't come into contact with any product and nor will it in this instance but 
what it will do is prevent the escape of steam and the escape of cleaning products during uh, CIP procedures. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't really see a temperature limit on here but I'm sure I did spot it somewhere and it was quite good. Anyway this is the one I want to go for because it seems to be easily um, moldable in terms of making a tool and uh, you know just dampening your tool and then sliding the sealant around the edge to give yourself a profile of sealant, an extruded almost profile and uh, it will stick to stuff that's slightly damp as well so that's helpful now this one I used for the boil kettle originally, this is white I might give this another visit but I do remember it um, changing colour a little bit maybe because it was on the boil kettle but either way we're going to go for the plumber's mate today bathroom and kitchen sealant so that's the plan. First thing I have to do is get off all of the old gasket and sealant and you can see I've actually used plumber's gold on here already and this is the section where it's kind of come away the, the neoprene's come away but the plumber's gold hasn't and look at that you can see it uh, it's still got its um, elasticity and it's quite hard to peel off so that and it leaves no residue whereas the neoprene unfortunately is leaving I don't know if you can see that under there it's left its glue behind so there's going to be a lot of scraping and swearing involved in the removal of that particular product but I think if I put a plumber's gold seal on and I ever want to remove it in the future in fact this is going far too well then it would be a case of pulling off the old gasket and replacing it with a new one oh I love that that's extremely handy so I'm going to set about doing this I've got five tanks to do Jesus Christ man oh, that's not going to do itself We'll see you when we've stripped five tanks out. I might put the radio on for this. Scrape, scrape, scrape for approximately three hours. I've got a very sore thumb and uh, thankfully the majority of the sealant and adhesive off of um, all five of the lids. There's three there. There's one here and there's one outside which I've already hit up with some tissue and some PVCU solvent cleaner to get rid of any residual adhesive because it is still a little bit tacky so um, I just wanted to make sure it worked before I recommended it so what I'm going to have to do is put some gloves on because it's nasty stuff and it cracks your skin and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set about attacking these other four it's not fun so here is an example of the first one that I've done. Don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up. So the mistake I made, and I did make one, is this tube of plumber's gold had already been opened. I don't know how long ago. And it was extremely difficult to force out. So I persevered. I also put some masking tape down to give me a clean edge. And then I tried to, um, well, tool it basically with a wet finger. You can see there's lots of water on here still. And that allows you to kind of smooth it out without pulling on the skin on the surface, so to speak. But I'm not very happy with it. I think I would have got a better job if I'd have just cut the edge of the... Um, applicator nozzle like quite thick like it is now but at a nice 90 degree angle come on focus on there you son of a shit and I think I've got a steady hand enough to actually apply that in a corner bead all the way around in one hit without having 
yeah this down to nothing kind of edge I've, tried, I've kind of put it in there as a wedge rather than um, as a as a corner bead a quadrant in the cut you know what I mean and I tried tooling it with obviously like bits of off cuts of uh, PVCU foam board and stuff like that and it just just didn't seem to work I'm not I don't know if you can see we've got a gasket there but I'm not 100% happy on, on the finish so I've ordered a couple more they only have three tubes in tool station Ratford so I've ordered those three tubes I'm gonna shoot up there pick them up and hopefully that will give me enough to apply another three or oh, that'll be tool station now hopefully that'll give me enough to apply another four circle so I need to get um need to get two lids out of one tube. Now I've got three tubes. Yeah anyway you do the math. Four divided by three, isn't it? Yeah somewhat recurring I guess. Ooh, who lives in a house like this? So three tubes three tubes of Advanced hybrid formula. Five years proven protection against mold. Plumber's gold with mold shield. Made for plumbers. Seals and bonds everything. Even underwater. Plumber's gold. It's good stuff. I really do like it. Just check that they're all clear, clear, and clear. Uh, they know me by name in Tool Station now, you know. It's quite cool. Don't even have to wear. Uh, standing queue and then also I picked up this in light Pluto one light spotlight this is going to go on the ceiling in place of one of the um, down lights that are in the LED down lights so we can point it at the beer menu because I've put lampshades on all of the light fittings above the bar now and it's quite difficult to read what's on the menu so this is that. Well, I'm feeling rather confident about this. Whether that confidence misplaced or not, we're about to find out. So, what I'm going to do is film the whole thing. So, I'm Scotch Brighton. The edge just to scratch up the surface at touch and provide a little bit of a key for this plumber's gold doesn't want to be too much and then what I'm going to do is push it down like so just to remove any powder that's come from the Scotch Bright more than anything else. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put any masking tape on this time. Let's see, there's quite a bit of um, the old sealant on here, which I, I could do with getting rid of. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm going to hit this one again with the solvent cleaner. I'm going to try a different one. I'll get the one out here because I know that's got no residue on it at all. This one was cleaned a little bit more, um, well, a little bit more, so it shouldn't have any residue on it. I'm going to do the same Go around the edges. Yeah, this looks nice and clean. I just need to hit that other one up just a little bit with a bit more solvent cleaner, just to get there's a, a residue of the silicon just on the edge and. Well, I could silicon straight over the top of it. I don't really want to. 
just in case it affects the bond. So we'll get rid of that. And there we go, that's that brushed out. So I'm going to get one of these tubes of plumber's gold. I'm going to cut the top off like so. Put the tube on. And then I'm going to do quite a deep, long cut between 45 and 50 degrees, just like that. So you can see the angle there. Now I'm hoping that as I bring this around the edge of the lid it will allow me to apply a nice even uh, seal all the way around non-stop so I'm gonna go from this edge here I'm just gonna go for it So if I can get this right, without stopping, and without having to use masking tape, then it's a winner. It looks good. It feels pretty good. The trick is to make sure it's all full and there are no gaps so we're getting around to the teetering point now where it's going to want to wobble towards me so we'll just restart again there we go that's almost a seamless joint and this is looking pretty good it almost looks to be slightly contracting when it comes out the tube and hits the cold metal but I'm guessing that's an optical illusion right 90% of the way around Looks pretty smart to me. Just the last little section to go now. You know what? I think I've nailed it. I've trapped a little air bubble in that corner, but that should be fine. And then I'm just going to get my finger in this tub of water, or my thumb rather. And this is just going to seat the edges and take any bumps out. think that is good enough so let's bring you in bring you in for a close-up now is this gonna show up on the camera I'm not sure it definitely looks better than the other one what do you think 
difficult to see because it's clear. But time will tell. So let's do uh, the other three. And uh, well, that'll be it for the day, I think, today, boys and girls. But that worked, so I'm pleased with the method. There we go, finished article. I'm really quite proud of myself. Got them all done today, didn't think I would. It's just ticked over to four o'clock. The light's beginning to fade outside. And, uh, well, it's bank holiday Monday. So really I could have had today off, but I didn't. So all we need to do now is, oh, these seals look in perfect nick actually, so I'm not gonna change these ones. But to give you some idea, I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with the tanks. The way these ones were designed, you see, they've got a flat bar on the top which you can put this seal on so when the lid sits, there's two large surface areas meeting together. But unfortunately on these tanks which I bought, just a sharp edge. It's a shame really that they don't sit down hard on this lip here. They don't, it comes down on this side there, the lid. So yeah, one of those things. Anyway, boys and girls, that's um, well, that's the first video I've done in 2022. So, well, at least I did some work and just didn't talk all the time. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>